last few minutes, we've just been handed a letter which the former top civil servant at the Foreign Office has uh, sent by email to the Standards Commissioner. Mm. Now, uh, this is Simon MacDonald of Salford, permanent undersecretary at the Foreign Office between 2015 and 2020, and it relates to Chris Pincher. Um, five days, he says, after Mr Pincher's resignation as Deputy Chief Whip, there remains significant confusion surrounding complaints about his behaviour prior to the drunkenness that he admits at the Carlton Club last week. The, the uh, former top civil servant goes on to say inaccurate claims by 10 Downing Street continue to be repeated. Uh, the BBC website reported that no official complaints against Mr Pincher were ever made. This is not true says this former top civil servant, um, and goes on to explain that in the summer of 2019, shortly after he was appointed a foreign minister, a group of officials complained about Mr Pinch's behaviour. Those complaints were discussed with the relevant official at the Cabinet Office. In substance, the allegations were similar to those made about his behaviour at the Carlton Club. An investigation upheld the complaint... And Mr Pincher apologised and promised not to repeat the behaviour. The same BBC website report continued, Downing Street said Mr Johnson was not aware of any specific allegations when he appointed Mr Pincher Deputy Chief Whip in February. Uh, it, the original number 10 line is not true, says Mr MacDonald. The modification is still not accurate. Mr Johnson was briefed in person about the initiation and outcome of the investigation, there was a formal complaint. Well, Richard Gaysford is at Downing Street. I mean, Richard Gaysford, the initial denial that Mr Johnson, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, did not know about allegations about Mr Pincher have completely unravelled to the point where Baron MacDonald this very senior foreign, civ foreign Office civil servant is saying that the explanations simply don't hold water. I mean, this is an astonishing letter, isn't it, for uh, the uh, former Foreign Office permanent secretary to release this morning. He's basically saying that what Downing Street has said is categorically untrue. Well, he's dropped a bombshell on Downing Street this morning uh, because uh, most of us who have uh, experience, perhaps, of the way these stories play out have realised that perhaps Boris Johnson knew more than Downing Street had been letting on, but here it is in black and white from a man who was at the very top of the operation in the Foreign Office who oversaw uh, all of that and was fully aware of the situation and says that Boris Johnson had been briefed in person. This morning we have Dominic Raab on the media rounds, will be appearing on our programme in a few minutes' time, saying that, yes, there was this investigation, uh, he had been aware of it, but uh, because there was no formal resolution, there was no sanction against Mr Pincher, uh, that uh, Boris Johnson would not have been made aware. That's what he's been saying up until this point. But Mr MacDonald very clearly says uh, allegations were resolved only in the sense that the investigation was completed. Mr Pincher was not exonerated. To characterise these allegations as unsubstantiated is therefore wrong. Uh, and that is what Downing Street's been doing up until last night. They were saying there was no substantial allegations, uh, nothing for the Prime Minister to work on. He had no knowledge of any specific allegations against Mr Pincher or any specific uh, issues that had come about. And that is why he had been employed as the Deputy Chief Whip back in February. So, really, uh, two sides to the story. Sir Simon MacDonald, a cross-bench peer, someone who sits in the House of Lords, obviously infuriated by what he's been seeing coming out of Downing Street over the last few days, wanting to put the record straight. And this morning, we can now put that to Dominic Raab and get the government side of the story. Have you ever seen anything like this before, where a former... Foreign Office Permanent Secretary issues a letter saying that Downing Street is not telling the truth. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this before? Personally not, but it shows the level of frustration that uh, is held perhaps within the civil service as a whole, as the way that government perhaps is being run at the moment. Uh, some real questions being asked uh, 
uh, not just of what Boris Johnson knew, as, but as to why uh, these lies, as effectively they're being highlighted by uh, Sir Simon MacDonald this morning, are being uh, spread by Downing Street here, perhaps to cover tracks of, of wrongdoing. Uh, Richard, thanks very much indeed. I suppose the key person to ask is, have you ever seen anything like I know. this before? Because your experience is much more extensive than any of ours. You know, you've worked in government, you know how civil servants operate. Have you ever seen a situation where somebody who was in charge at the time of these investigations, allegations that the, the Prime Minister denies any knowledge of, comes out and says, well, actually, the Prime Minister knew exactly what was going on? I mean, I think the, the last sentence of the letter, which says he cannot, this is Mr Pincher, yeah. be allowed to use the confidentiality of the process three years ago to pursue his predatory behaviour in other contexts. So, I mean, normally these things would happen behind closed doors or when there's an inquiry or over a period of months. Clearly, the former permanent secretary, who was the guy at the time who oversaw this, feels unless he doesn't say something publicly now... Yeah. Not only are Downing Street not telling the truth, but the decision they made to allow him to be the deputy chief whip in charge of welfare earlier in the year, Absolutely. that could happen again. So, I mean, it's almost like he felt that there was no other thing to do other than to go public. I've never seen anything like it, ever. This is explosive. Uh, so you, mention, you mention the end of the letter and, and he makes it clear it's unusual for him to have written to the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards. He says, I am conscious of the duty owed to the target of an investigation, but I act out of duty towards the victims. Mr Pincher deceived me and others in 2019. Yesterday, the government minister said, it's really important that people who have suffered mm. the hands of pe others, inappropriate behaviour, mm. it's really important they feel emboldened to come forward. Mm. I put to Mr Quince yesterday... You did? ..yesterday morning, three people had come mm. forward to complain mm. about his behaviour, but he kept insisting, or oh, we listen to mm. people when they come forward. Now this... Mm former head of the civil service in the Foreign Office, is saying, I have to do this mm. on behalf of the victims because somebody is deceiving mm. them and they need to be protected. Also, if you think what this actually means for the decision made earlier this year in the reshuffle, on that day, we were being told for the last three or four days either the Prime Minister didn't know that Chris Pincher had been subject to these allegations or that they weren't specific. But in fact, we now know, he put him in charge of being the Deputy Chief Whip and Welfare in the House of Commons, knowing that he had been investigated, not exonerated, had to apologise when he was a Foreign Office Minister, and that after that, there were further allegations and incidents. And despite all of that, the judgement, the judgement made in number 10 was that it was OK to appoint him to that job. I mean, it's an astonishing judgment. It was OK to appoint him and it was OK to say subsequently that he didn't know about it when <sighs> this civil servant says he knew personally. Yeah. So a lot to talk to the Deputy Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, Good. about.